Hello everyone and welcome to today's uh, webinar. The subject is medical solutions. Uh, I've got the great pleasure, I've got uh, panelists from Intel, uh, Roger Tang and Kelvin Loom, and myself, Daniel Yen from Digital Marketing ROI. Welcome gentlemen. Hello. Hey. Hello. So, just a couple of housekeeping issues. Uh, the phone number at the front, obviously for those who want to dial in, and uh, we have Eric Wong, who is on the uh, chat lines as well. In case uh, you have any issues, uh, just please uh, raise your hand or ask a question by live chat. So Eric will be able to answer those on behalf of, of the team. So today we're going to be talking about the intersection of healthcare sector and technologies, particularly in Asia, which is a very dynamic, very fast-growing economy. And, um, t you know, some of the things that we're going to talk about have to do with a connected hospital environment where we want to envision the future digital hospital of tomorrow today uh, and as we all know Intel's here to sponsor the future so Roger please go ahead and describe to us what is the uh, ideal connected hospital environment going to be like the connected hospital has been implemented in many hospitals across the globe the hospital backend systems are getting matured. For example, the hospital information system, HIS, the electronics medical record, EMR, and personal health record, PHR. All the patient's information and medical record are securely stored in the data center. So in a connected hospital, a doctor or nurse can utilize a multi-parameter patient monitor to pull the patient information of HIS EMR system. That's besides, excellent. Yeah. Thank so you. Besides, okay, thank you. What I wanted to uh, highlight, I guess, here is the fact that the data can flow seamlessly from uh, patient to doctor and, and so on and so forth. And uh, the key factor is to have the right hardware in place. Let's look at that in a little bit more detail as we uh, examine, I guess, how the connected environment uh, is going to assist uh, both doctors and patients in terms of communication and uh, in terms of imaging, uh, diagnostic, and so on and so forth. Roger, what are the key segments in healthcare that you see uh, is going to help the hospitals of tomorrow in that sense? Okay, so as we can see from the slides, there are three key categories in the healthcare segment. So for the first category, we have this imaging, diagnostics, and therapeutics category. So for this category, they are actually a highly regulated category. You know, you know the device has passed strict regulations due to these types of devices are important to provide the accurate readings or images. And any minor error might cause uh, serious consequences. So uh, for, Im for imaging, for, for example, CT, MRI, Usually, this device requires at least four zero processes mm -hmm. for image reconstruction purposes. Right. So there's a lot of computing power, isn't it? And all of that cannot necessarily be outsourced to the cloud for computing, all of these real-time imaging processing. Um, what are the key trends that you then see uh, in imaging and diagnostics? There's a couple of three key areas that I see here from uh, the CT, MRI, and PETs, and all that type of stuff. How does that work for uh, when you have Intel embedded? How does that assist in this process? Okay, so as we mentioned earlier, we are getting into the trend of the connected hospital, so which means all the medical devices will be connected. So when we talk about connectivity, data security is very important. Okay, excellent. Um, and obviously, uh, there are uh, key trends in therapeutics and fitness as well. Perhaps uh, you can choose one of those, such as maybe the uh, therapeutic area, and to just help us understand how is the Intel solution assisting in, in enhancing the um, patient uh, care itself? Okay. So for, for the therapeutics device, you know, uh, other than connectivity, you know, the device when when it link up in order for the doctor to be able to trace trace the patient's medical results anytime and in fact anywhere as well. Right, right. Yeah. That, that's interesting. 
So uh, beyond, uh, you know, um, remedial health and looking after patients in a hospital environment, you know, the um, advances in technology uh, are very important in terms of proactive health, isn't it? In that sense, there's a lot of uh, uh, people who are growing older. In fact, it's predicted by the year 2050, I believe, 2 billion uh, people on this planet will be over the age of 60. And that's a lot of people. So, uh, you know, the governments around the world are really talking about, um, you know, uh, the right type of uh, lifestyle, if you like. And obviously, fitness takes a big chunk of that uh, in helping people remain healthy. So, uh, in the next slide, we're going to look at the uh, Connected Fitness Center, uh, which is personally exciting to me because, uh, you know, I've been a big believer in, uh, in staying healthy by exercise. But in this case, how is technology playing a role in uh, assisting, um, you know, the average person uh, in terms of remaining healthy uh, and to use, the, you know, smart, you know, fitness devices? Kelvin, can you tell us a bit more about that? Sure. So then previously we talked about the connected uh, hospital concept, right? So that connected concept is actually can be further involved to other segments like the fitness center, as you mentioned just now, right? So uh, we are talking about instilling intelligence into the fitness equipment. Because traditionally, for fitness equipment, uh, it is with the uh, LED console that display only the basic information, like the uh, heartbeat, the distance, and even the training program options, right? So uh, the trend is that uh, nowadays the console is to have a bigger screen and with touch control, okay, so that you have an uh, interactive kind of uh, 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 interactive kind of event that's going on. And you are now able to connect to the internet and watch video on demand and even race with friends virtually. Okay, with all this rich multimedia experience, it actually requires high computing power where Intel platform can help in this case. Okay. And with every fitness equipment that is connected, so uh, you are able to retrieve or store your training progress from any single machine. Okay. Right? And for, for this, you can actually track the progress from your phone and share it with your personal trainer or have different topics. Right. So it's really be able to, um, you know, archive a lot of your, um, um, you know, fitness, performance, habits, trends, and in many ways to have that data on tap, whichever machine you have in, happen to be using in the gym or even maybe at home. Yeah. Would that be right? That's very exciting. Let's look at a particular case study, which is uh, the Fitness Center Digital Trainer. And I can see this one is being uh, created by MyFit uh, device by Respond Design. Yeah? Um, and on this uh, monitor that we see in front of us, there is a, there's a camera on top. In fact, it looks like no ordinary camera, isn't it? Tell us more about that, and what does this do? Well, actually, that camera is not ordinary camera, as you say. It's, it's actually a 3D sensor as well. Okay. So this uh, uh, this uh, response design actually intends to create this world first uh, digital trainer, and they have a few challenges. And one of the key challenges is uh, they want to have a very fast uh, gesture recognition. Okay. So for this machine, is powered by uh, Intel Core i5 multi core processor, where uh, they they can overcome the challenge by using one of the core to process the gesture data in order to ensure the best performance in gesture recognition. Mm -hmm. And they use other core to process other data like the 3D modeling, the training programs, and so on. And I believe it must also take advantage of other Intel wizardry, such as multi-threading, in order to process multiple streams of data simultaneously. Um, is that a unique uh, feature that allows this machine to uh, perform um, with just two cores? Yeah, so, so the hyper threading definitely will be helped in this case. So uh, according to response design is that they, they are able to delegate like different software threads to the multi-core or multi trader CPU in order to gain like three X performance than a single trader now. Three X, did you say so three hundred percent more? Okay. Yes. Exciting. Very nice. So um, I guess a, there are many examples of how Intel is assisting both the medical uh, you know uh, remedial health environment, as well as proactive health. Here we're looking at more examples in terms of remote patient monitoring system, um, the bedside infotainment system, and obviously having a, uh, an intelligent embedded device uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a medical environment is assisting both doctors and patients on their road to recovery. Tell us more how that works uh, in, in terms of the Intel solution. Okay, sure. 
Before we can talk more about the uh, bedside infotainment system, it is known as bedside terminal as well. So we are, we, we are talking about the connected environment, right? So this is really uh, con uh, connecting up to the point of care. Okay? It is located just beside the patient at, the, at their bedside. Okay? So for the patient, they are able to, let's say, enjoy on-demand multimedia entertainment, browse through the internet and order their meals or access their uh, hospital bills and so on. Whereas for the healthcare practitioners, they are able to record and uh, retrieve the patient's data or medical records, prescriptions, and so on, or even share the CT, MRI, digital images to the patients right at their bedside. Okay, so for bedside infotainment system, uh, actually, uh, it, it has a range of products that can, can, can be supported uh, from Atom up to four, four series. Okay, so for Intel, it provides like a uh, robust system and very good uh, HD graphics performance for medical imaging app applications and also multimedia entertainment. And of course, the, the connectivity and security and even the remote management is, is important for the uh, bedside entertainment system in order for the hospital to manage the, uh, the, the system. So, so I imagine it could even assist the, the doctor in terms of monitoring the patient's uh, progress in terms of their recovery. Uh, if they're plugging in different kind of bio measurement, uh, you know, and, and measuring the vital signs or something like that, that could effectively feed into this, isn't it? Yeah, so that, that would be more suitable for, uh, for the remote patient monitoring system. That, that is the uh, intention for the whole the, the system that it is built. It is able to like, collect multiple data like from the uh, oximeter, from the weight scale, from the blood pressure monitoring devices, and store all the data in the remote patient, uh, patient monitoring system in order for the patients to, to maintain and uh, manage their own personal health and their diet and good uh, living habits. That's, that's interesting and, and very useful. I imagine when uh, a person moves from one hospital to another maybe, or uh, needs to share this information with another specialist, potentially even located in a different hospital, a different city, a different country. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. So technology uh, is really the foundation to enable the next generation healthcare environment. I can see that already. Um, the competitive solutions that we need uh, are multiple. Um, I think there's a question about reliability, connectivity, performance, uh, and all that type of stuff. And, and, and finally, safety and security, which I believe we're going to touch on later on. But again, within the, the, the context of an aging population, and I'm, not I'm talking about 2 billion people over the age of 60, some of them will be in the 70s, some of them will be in the 80s. Governments around the world are very, very concerned and making sure that uh, these people are not just getting great uh, health today, but have the medical infrastructure to take care of a growing number of people who are moving up in, uh, in terms of and, and aging in, into, that, uh, into different age, higher age groups. So um, the Intel platform technologies, uh, tell us more about that, Kelvin. What are those and how does that assist in medical solution? Okay, so uh, this slide actually shows that um, there are a range of products from Atom, Celeron, Pentium, and up to the Xeon class processor, right? So it is, uh, the, and then it is mapped to different platform technologies that could be helped in different uh, areas. So uh, it's more to show that uh, when you are selecting your product and when you decide to have certain features, let's say uh, if you want to have the uh, remote management features, it will be supported from Core i5 onwards to uh, up to Xeon class uh, processor. So probably you can talk um, talk about the uh, virtualization technology that helps in uh, the medical or health devices. So as you can see over here, you can see two uh, virtualization technology. One is VTX, which is supported from Atom up to beyond, and then we have VTP, which is a premium kind of uh, kind of feature. Uh, it, it support uh, it is support from Core i5 onwards to uh, up to beyond. Okay. So what it does is that. This means traditionally one platform or one system can only install one operating system. Okay, with uh, virtualization, you can actually install multiple operating systems. Okay, with VTX, it is a hardware accelerated uh, feature from uh, Intel processor that improves the performance of the virtual machines or the virtual operating system. Okay, as as for the VTB, uh, it is able to um, improve the I/O performance. Let's say we can as directly assign. Yeah, the internet to the uh, one of the operating systems so that it's having like better performance compared to the uh, the, the early generations of the virtualization. Okay. okay. So um, the VTX uh, allows for potentially parallel OSs to run concurrently. 
or parallel um, virtual systems? It's parallel uh, operating system. Yeah. Parallel. So what it does is that some of the benefits are like uh, you can have the uh, legacy kind of application migration because some of the new platforms, they, they, they wouldn't uh, support the older generations of yeah. operating system or applications. So mm. with virtualization, you can actually do that because uh, the operating system itself is actually a virtual machine that you can install uh, on the latest and greatest uh, platform. And then there's another uh, potential benefit is that um, you can do some mission critical uh, uh, isolation as well. So let's say if you have two, you have two operating systems, one is doing some big mission critical uh, uh, task, and then the other one would be a general purpose uh, operating system. And let's say if the general uh, purpose operating system is hung. It will not affect the mission critical uh, operating system itself. Right, right. Now that makes a lot of sense. And some of the applications of the VTX platform, particularly, would be, I guess, uh, in a hospital CRM or some kind of uh, data management facility within a hospital, or even maybe within the medical records of governments, I imagine, where, as you pointed out, being able to access those databases in real time will require multiple virtual systems running concurrently, so that, as you pointed out, if one were to fail for whatever reason, the other one would just instantly take over. Would that be in that context that uh, you would require the high computing power of VTX platform? Oh, exactly. It, it would be uh, a, a mixture of VTX and VTE, I think. Okay. Excellent. Very good. So uh, what we are looking at uh, uh, today, I guess, is uh, looking at the trends, isn't it? And the trends are uh, going up in every way. What actually surprised me, um, you know, folks, is the fact that a lot of those medical devices, some of those are actually embedded inside a human being uh, has a CPU, doesn't it? And these CPUs are vulnerable just like any device, your computer, your PC, or what have you. And viruses can be uh, at, at times downloaded into these medical devices. Uh, so I'm shocked to see that um, when it comes to, you know, 173 medical devices infected since malware since 2009, you know, at the hardware level, it's critical that we have some type of security, some type of firewall to protect the device from malfunctioning. How is Intel addressing that challenge and, and, and what is it doing, um, in this case at the hardware level, because there's no I.O. there, there's no keyboard, nothing to interface with it, and it needs to be protected very much at the hardware level. And I believe Intel has a solution there. What is that again and how does that work? So for a medical device that is connected, it is not spared from the malware intrusion. So uh, as we have mentioned earlier, the number of intrusions is getting increasing day by day. So for Intel, a company that always emphasizes on the data security, the Intel has acquired McAfee. So McAfee has several data security features specially designed to provide the data security protection for the medical device. So. Why not we move to the next slide and we can show the number of cumulative malware threats recorded by the McAfee Labs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as you can see here, the number of the malware threats is 6 million in 2007 mm -hmm. and increasing to 56 million in 2011. So when a medical device is connected, there's always a high risk to be infected by malware. Okay. So this, this hardware protection, Roger, that works on most of the um, you know Intel range of chips, or is it just maybe at the core and above level? Can you just talk to us a bit a bit more about that? So actually, this uh, McAfee is a is a software it can it's uh, can protect from Apple for even zero. Okay. Yep. So actually, uh, for embedded standpoint, McAfee focus on different security features as compared to the traditional antivirus solution. You know, so we want to emphasize here is the, you know, the app is not only providing the antivirus, but McAfee also provides the anti-hacking features. It can protect the unwanted program installations, either intentionally or accidentally. Right. Very interesting. And I. Uh... I, I recall, and correct me if, if we're wrong there, but uh, 
this sits below the operating system level, so it's actually uh, difficult to disable that function, isn't it? Thomas, do you have some thoughts on that? Yes. Uh, when you when you you know, if you talk about the malware protections, I think uh, many people have also uh, heard about this terms called rootkits, right? So those things reside before in your computer systems. Even before you boot up the computer system, is there? And when you boot up, you actually, you know, uh, attack uh, your machines or right. your equipment. So what happens is if you uh, have just ordinary malware protection programs, what happens is these things will not be detected, right? right? Because it's already part of the operating system when you boot up. So if you have end-to-end -end protections for the for the time that you've been power on, the protections are already there with the combinations of Intel. Uh, technologies and also the McAfee technologies. Right. Then you are sure so you are free from all these attacks, known and unknown. Good, so good. This, is, this is the values that Intel can deliver. I think it's unparalleled in the industry. You're quite right. Because even before the OS kicks in, uh, it's already protected you. But once the OS kicks in, it's too late because the virus is really designed to work on the OS, isn't it? Yes, yes exactly. Right, right, right. Very interesting. All right, folks. Um, you know, there's, um, you know, Intel itself is is involved in the healthcare sector in every level, and we've touched only on some of them today. However, you know, um, there are some areas where Intel offers this unique uh, value proposition within the medical solution ecosystem. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, Thomas or 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 Kelvin or one of you guys would like to maybe share with us what are your views in terms of the key points of differentiation that you would like to highlight based on what we have covered so far. Okay, so uh, if you look at you know the connected hospital environment, so you, you see that once you're connected, you are actually open up yourself for a lot of uncertainties, right? So our approach is not just you know providing you the compute power, but our approach is to make sure that you know you once you have the compute power, you get connectivity, you are protected, you get the manageability, you have a reliable platform to uh, rely on, right? All this aspect of it, right? Connect, secure, manage, reliability, everything uh, from Intel solution point, uh, point of view, we are delivering this. Right. Of course, uh, uh, you may think that uh, Intel is just a chip maker. How can they deliver so much of it, right? So we have a huge ecosystem, both software, hardware, operating systems, right? They are all around us to help us to deliver these visions that we have to share with you uh, to the market, to the end users. Right, right, right. So we are not just powered by Intel, but you're powered by a lot of uh, uh, ecosystem who is also working hand in hand with us to make sure that we have a more secure healthcare connected environment. You're quite right, and in that sense, uh, you know, the Intel, uh, you know, representatives play a very critical role, isn't it, in terms of the technology roadmap, as you pointed out, and by working very closely with hardware developers, offering that unique end-to-end -end consulting solution that allows uh, hardware developers to choose not just the right kind of chip, but the right kind of solution, and as you as you mentioned there, the 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 other components that plug into that ecosystem um, has to be done in, in a partnership type of environment. Yeah. Uh, and I guess this is really uh, where your team uh, plays a very important role. Tell, can you tell us more about that? What's the, what's life like in the day to day kind of experiences that uh, you know a hardware developer has when they're interacting with an Intel representative? So typically, you know, if you're hardware developers, right, you have multiple channels to reach to Intel, right? So uh, uh, some of you are covered already by the Intel sales representations, uh, representative and uh, broader communities, right? So we have recently, you know, set up the online sales centers, right? So this online sales center is a group of people that will stay there, you know, uh, as long as possible. And I would say that it's 24 by 7, so you can reach them 24 by 7. Right. To emails, to telephones, they are ready to help you, to lead you to a suitable solutions that Intel and the partners can deliver. Right. right. So we, we are trying to reach out at this moment. We are trying to reach out to more of the uh, developers out there. Right, it doesn't matter what size you are in, right? But you have an Intel representative that is attentive to your needs today. Right, right. And that, that solution is obviously uh, quite unique because I've uh, 
kind of, uh, I'm a big technology buff myself. I love to read about the latest and the greatest in terms of gadgets. Uh, but here we're talking about uh, Intel offering its expertise to hardware developers of all sizes. Um, and I guess what we encourage uh, the audience and, and people going to be listening to this is to make the effort to actually uh, maybe reach out to you guys and uh, be surprised to, to the level of professional help and assistance that they can get even before they start to build, especially at the R&D, uh, feasibility, road mapping stage of their hardware development cycle. Would that be right? Yes, yes, exactly. So you'll be surprised of the efficiencies that, you know, the online sales group can deliver to you, right? So they, they, they are actually, you know, uh, working, you know, I think around the clock, around the world to deliver the suitable, to propose to you a suitable features and solutions according to your needs, right? Mm. So I think uh, this is the one of the uh, most useful arm for you to tap into, right? One of the most useful resources for you to tap into today to enjoy and experience uh, Intel's uh, power in the in compute, uh, computing world. And there's so many emerging sectors in terms of embedded technology. I mean, medical solution sector itself, I can see already has many applications, and the two main ones would be remedial health, which is basically taking care of sick people who are on the road to recovery, and then proactive health on the other hand. So that already can spawn many kind of intelligent devices. But um, just as a quick recap, perhaps we can touch quickly on the other other sort of applications. There's, we've talked about signage before, uh, the security of course, and there's so many more. And I guess your team is able to address each and every one of those sectors. Is that right? Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, it may not be just from our teams, right? So uh, the, the people that are on this bridge, you see, it's just one small portion of the Intel employees that focus on sectors. So we have different expertise who are covering, you know, uh, other segments like those industrial energy, you know, you mentioned about signing, uh, we have digital security surveillance, we have uh, gaming, we have uh, retail sectors, you know, all these people uh, is uh, professional teams that, you know, well-trained in Intel technologies and well-trained in uh, the uh, the sector's needs, right? So they can reach out to you as well if you don't have any questions for me. Right, right. But maybe I'll, I'll ask uh, Kelvin to also share some of his thoughts in terms of the future of technology. And how do you feel Intel is playing a critical role in accelerating, you know, the development of uh, newer devices, more powerful devices, more effective devices, devices that actually can enhance our life? Uh, Intel's website quotes sponsors the future. Tell us your views about that. So I, I would say right now, um, for for each of the every generations that we have created, the newer generations will be having better performance uh, compared to the previous generations, right? So, but not only the, the performance, we can see that the uh, the power itself is like lowering uh, lowering down, right? So from from the previous uh, slides that we can see, so some of the the, the equipments that we can see is like more focusing on like uh, portability and stuff. So I would say we the next gen, next few generations of uh, CPU that we are going to have is that uh, having higher performance and lower lower power that helps in uh, each of the every segments that uh, might be needing it. Okay, no, that's great. Um, I, I I heard you guys talk about performance and performance is key, isn't it? But today um, there are devices that require that high level performance. And I think we haven't mentioned it, might have mentioned it before, but some of those computing capabilities, they cannot really be outsourced to the cloud, can they? Especially when you talk about life-saving devices that are monitoring microsecond by microsecond the state of a patient. None of this can be outsourced to the cloud. You can't use necessarily a low performance chip. And of course, in developing devices that uh, is meeting existing demand, Intel will play a role in communicating and discussing and even consulting with hardware developers. Roger, can you tell us what do you think, um, you know, uh, the unique sort of uh, role that Intel plays in the, in the whole hardware development e uh, ecosystem and, and its life cycle as well? Yeah, so as uh, mentioned earlier, Intel has a great relationship with many ecosystems so across the APAC region. EMEA region, the, the American region. 
So we have many sales teams, the sales forces, field teams, to work with these ecosystems. So we, we build solutions with them. You know, we, we together develop the solutions for different segments. For example, we have medical, as, as mentioned by earlier by this uh, Kelvin. Yeah. Excellent. So Thomas, maybe you want to you wanna share your final views and uh, invite the, the audience and everybody who listens to this to, to, to start a conversation with you guys. Go ahead. Yeah, so, you know, if you uh, lack of idea what to start and think uh, how to start, right, so you can, you know, in, for us, apart from being a chip maker, uh, we, we produce silicon, but of course, uh, for every market segment itself, we come up with uh, different kind of POCs, right? For healthcare, for example, we have uh, POCs for the mobile uh, client system MCAs. Some of them is delivered by our uh, our ecosystem. Some of them is delivered by us. So we also have reference design. If you do not know how to uh, uh, kickstart your designs, we have reference designs that we can uh, you can tap into. We have a lot of documentations that are available online, or you can contact one of the salespersons to uh, get uh, attached to these resources, right? And uh, we uh, lately we also move into you know producing the uh, device that is look alike the real device that you use in the market, uh, in the medical the hospital. We call it FFRD. So we are moving from uh, just you know a chip makers to helping you to realize how the medical equipments will be right in the right. real world. Right. This is to cut short your development cycles to, you know, to help you jumpstart into your Intel environment. Right. So it's really going beyond ima imagination and, and ideation and imagineering, as I call it, into actually creating real live working proof of concepts. So if you're a hardware developer out there and you want to feel more confident about what is your gut feeling when it comes to a device that you've got on your roadmap, it's quite likely, in fact, very possible that Intel has already built a proof of concept working model, working model. And all you need to do is to reach out to them and say, well, show me how it works. And Intel will be happy, as I get it now, to, to exactly. help them. Right? Yes. All right. So call out today to our online sales agents, OK? Online sales account managers. Call to them. They will be able to help you to jumpstart your uh, uh, developments for the next platform that you have. Sounds, sounds fantastic, guys. And of course, as you can see on the screen, more information can be found at the website that you can see down at the bottom there of, the, of this deck. I want to thank everybody, um, Thomas, Roger, and Kelvin, today for joining me um, in, in really kind of a starting a conversation, a discussion, to look at the, 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 what's possible today when it comes to medical solution, but more importantly, what's possible tomorrow. If uh, you know you can you can have a, a bit of a chat with those guys, and they have proof of concept working model, which is exciting, and and to me this is uh, perhaps uh, an opportunity maybe in the future to even demonstrate some of those. Should you choose to log in again uh, to one of our upcoming webinars uh, in the near future, so once more thanks again guys, and um, you know look forward to the next one. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you.